Hey, 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 what is up, everyone? Vadiwa here, and welcome to another episode of Follow From Out of View Poopocalypse, a mod review of a story and a weird plot to connect all the mods and episodes together. Now, in this episode, there might be some tentacles in it, so be warned. If you don't like it, or if you're offended by it, then you can go suck my dick. Ruby, my character, captured a few slaves in the previous episode, and they are about to be released at our pool, so maybe she should go check inside the cage to see if there's anyone hidden inside. Maybe there's like a straggler. And man, it's so disgusting and dirty in here. Man, there's even rat roaches. Crows and Creatures by Zazum improves and retextures a few of the creatures in the Commonwealth. The Vanilla Brahmin looks like a very sickly cow that needs to be put down. Now it has a very rich orange brown color to the fur with the mod on. Now the healthy version of the Brahmin looks more clean and maintained. It doesn't look scraggly. It looks like it's owned by someone. And right here we're looking at the wild version which also has the same rich orange brown color to the fur. Now with the wild version there are patches of fur on its back which is absent from the healthy version. Now both versions looks yummy enough to eat. Mm -mm -mm, some Brahmin burgers and prime rib. The cat has been changed from a grey tabby into a savannah cat. The savannah cat is a hybrid of a domestic cat and a wild cat from Africa. They have a vivid orange yellow coat with spots and a kind of like a cheetah. Now I would imagine when human civilization falls, all the cats will breed like crazy. The crows used to be shiny and they were grey, now they are black and they have been retextured using real photographs of crows to create them. Now I actually revealed this mod in the previous episode but there was an update at which added more creatures. The last creature is a creepy crawly, the rat roaches now look like cockroaches that you would see in real life. Get it? Cockroaches? <laughs> now the coloration also looks like the ones that you would see in your kitchen or the bathroom. The brown to orange color of this disgusting bug will make you want to freak out. The glowing rat roaches also share the same color scheme except obviously it has a green glow to it. The Brahmin corpses, ah yeah, they have been retextured because if we're to loot a body or corpse, it might as well be a good looking one. Rebby here hates rat roaches, she has encountered enough of them already, so maybe she should go and freshen up after being inside the cage. Looks Mirrored by Expired6978 is a simple yet very immersive mod that will allow you to change how you look. So how it works is you go to your build menu, there's a mirror that can be placed on walls and other surfaces. And once you place it, you just walk up to it and it can be used as a regular container like any other mirror. However, you can also press the spacebar and it will also make you go into the look menu. Now this is a great way to change how you look because previously you had to use the command console and type in SOM14. And but however, this is way more immersive again, a very simple and beautiful mod to make yourself look beautiful. I think Ruby should spend a little bit more time in the mirror to make herself look good. AGCP's Face Details Add-on by A God Complex Pikachu provides a few dozen different facial features to add some variation to your character. Under markings, there are some beauty marks. They are usually located around the lips and underneath the eyes. And under damage, there are some burn scars, cuts, and many different scratches to choose from. Now this is a very good way to add some battle scars to your character, although some of them look self-inflicted. Underground, there are blood splatters to add to your face. It either covers one side of your face, a portion of it, or the entire face. That tattoos are kind of fun. Most of the tattoos are located on the face. However, some are located around the neck area. I really like the lip one, and I also like the one where there's an eye on the character's forehead. She can be like Tien from Dragon Ball, and maybe Alucard from Helsing. Lastly, under face paint, we have a clown blood paint, one that looks like Joker, and ah, look at that, Dark Brotherhood of Skyrim, from Skyrim, I mean. But yeah, it seems like there are just these additional choices to add to your face. And of course, you can add multiple different features onto your face at the same time. Now, I think Rebi should walk around with a face like this in this episode. Now, she looks like a crazy bitch that is a leader of some kind of a crazy cult leading a bunch of bikini followers. Now, I do kind of wonder when will someone add like My Little Pony cutie marks to the face paint. Now, I'm not a brony. Now, if I was a brony, I think Princess Celestia or Nightmare Moon is very hot. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. Rebi should change her hairstyle to cover up the eye tattoo because it might be too freaky for some people. Matoko Hair Goes to the Shell by Stefan MB is the perfect hair to go with a very popular mod that I revealed a few episodes ago. The Matoko Hair can be found in the show look menu, and the hair is based on a Matoko Kuzunagi character from a very popular series called Ghost in the Shell. The hair should be used with the Ghost in the Shell outfit because, well, they're pretty much made for each other, but yeah, the hair does look very similar to the one that's found from the show, and the Matoko Hair does have physics properties to it, so it will flow and jostle around as you move about. 
with Remy's new slaves. They're gonna need their own bikini so we can easily figure out who's a slave and who's a follower. Wasteland Bathing Suit by Jet4571 is a simple bikini mod that provides two different bikinis and it's perfect if you have a pool like me. The first bikini can be found by going north of Sanctuary and then finding a group of bikini girls. Hey, they don't look that bad so maybe uh, Remy should enslave one of them. Now after you kill them, there's gonna be a duffel bag that contains a few bikinis and it will also allow you to craft them at the chemistry lab. The second bikini can be found at North Hagen Beach and again there will be a bunch of hostile bikini girls that have to be killed. And nearby there's gonna be another duffel bag and yep, this is right here, the butt floss. Yep, that's exactly what I would say to describe this bikini dong. The first bikini is a standard two-piece bikini. The bikini is quite conservative compared to the other ones that we've seen and compared to the second bikini that we're gonna see right now. The second bikini right here is also a two-piece, however, the bikini bottom is a dong and I am using a body texture right now that has a panty painted on it just so you guys can see the back of the bikini without having to worry too much. And yes, it is indeed butt floss. And yes, this body texture is really useful for situations like this. There are six colors for each bikini and again after they've been found at their respective locations, they can then be crafted at the chemistry station. Now I don't know about you guys, but Rebby here needs to train the new slaves. We need to tentacle them to get them ready. Squid Follower by M150 is the best mod ever for Fallout 4 and I'm being serious, very dead serious. Now in the build menu there is a squid workbench that can be crafted and through here we can craft a squid armor for our character. We can also craft armor and weapons for a unique follower and there's also some nuka rounds and I'm not quite sure what they're used for at the moment. Now finally we can also craft a unique weapon and ammo for that weapon. Now the squid workbench kind of looks like someone is kind of getting ready for dinner. This here is squid armor, I'm going to be calling it the tentacle armor or maybe the hentai armor. There are 7 squids that are attached to your body and they're mostly attached to your head, arms, legs and around the upper torso. Now it is a good thing there's, that there's nothing attached to your butt or around the other special spots otherwise it might be too crazy, too sexy and too kinky. The tentacle armor may be worn by female, male or even super mutants. Now the next thing are the weapons. Now there is a squid gun that looks like a handgun of some sort. It is in the shape of a squid and the cool thing is that it squirts acid. The acid is quite powerful and it will dissolve enemies into goo. And I cannot wait to squirt the slaves if you guys know what I mean. Oh, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Another weapon is a sledgehammer which can be modded to have a squid on it. Now this adorable cute sledgehammer has a squid on top and it's holding a hammer. And I also cannot wait to hammer the slaves. Okay, right away, stop it, that's not funny, that's so stupid. There is a follower that can be found near Nahant and this is one of the most unique follower that I've seen in Fallout 4. Now I'm not even going to try to attempt to pronounce its name. Now the squid follower has a few accessories. Here are some headgear and it can wear a crown and some kind of a squid hat. And it kind of reminds me of the squid girl from that one anime, I think it's called Ika Musume. Now it can also wear mirror-like armor which comes in two different colors. Now it wouldn't make sense for it to wear armor because a squid is kind of soft body and wearing an armor would be beneficial for it. The fun part is the weapons the squid follower has. Now these are the boxing gloves and these are my favorite. We can use tentacles and fisting at the same time for training. Oh my goodness, Vadiwa, what the hell was that? That was disgusting. Fisting, really? Now the other weapons look a little bit more dangerous like gauntlets from Death Claws, Mirlurks, and Mirlurk Queens. Now let's go check out the follower in battle. I gave the follower some boxing gloves, of course. Look at him, he's like a slimy version of Mike Tyson or something. Alright, time to train the ladies right here with some fisting, tentacles, squirting, and hammering at the same time. Now Ribby's gonna leave the training to the squid, and now in the meanwhile, I think Ribby should maybe try to find a way to defend the pool, followers, and slay some raiders because they look kind of popular, you know, it looks like something that people would try to steal. Verdi Bird Overhaul by Kuta Poom adds a few new features and changes how Verdi Bird works in the game. Now first, we can craft 8 different defensive Verdi Birds that will now patrol around and they each have different weapons like lasers and missiles. So let's go test out the bomber, shall we? Now it's going to fly up in the air and it's going to circle around and if there are enemies around the bomber will dive down and unleash hell upon the commonwealth with a barrage of what looks to be dozens of mini nukes.
Now, the next thing I'm going to try is the laser vertibirds, and again, they're going to fly off and they're going to patrol the perimeter for enemies. And once the vertibird spots something, it will engage the enemy with a barrage of lasers, and it will pass by a couple of times to eliminate all the bad guys. The vertibird and the game are a little bit more durable, and they have a little bit of a different AI, like they will kind of withdraw, fly higher, or things get a little bit too tough. Now, the best part about the mod is that there is a vertibird that can be built called a vertibrain, and the vertibrain is a vertibird that can talk to you. Now, you can ride on it, it has a nice calm voice to it unlike Vaddy was voice right here let's see what you got this unit is operating under normal parameters the vertibird can be used as a I place to store your items and of course you, you can use it as like a personal vertibird to fly to your destination when you try to use it for fast traveling Now there are a few other things like this beacon right here that can be built that will allow you to call in a vertibird regardless of what faction you join. And right here we also have a few different flares that can be crafted that can be used for the all-purpose flare gun. Now for example, the flare gun can be used to fire the EMP grenade which heavily damages machines and robots. It takes about two shots to destroy these civs. Now another flare allows you to call the vertibrain over to where the flare is, so you just fire it over there, and the vertibrain will fly to that location. Now ideally, of course, you want to fire it near you so you can get to it faster. Anyways, I think this is a good place to stop. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to bang that like and subscribe button, bang it good. And in the next episode, I think Rev is going to try to find some more ways to defend her property. Now, I do have a Patreon if you'd like to donate and help keep this mod series going. I appreciate it. I appreciate all your love and support. And I do have a Twitter if you want to follow me. Like, like if I stream on Twitch, I'll tell you guys on there. And yeah, stay sexy, my friends. Stay sexy. Now, when you are ready to capture your first slave, you can shoot the target. In this case, it's Magnolia, and she will drop to the floor paralyzed. Next, go up to Magnolia, press E, and capture her. And it will ones that I really like, just because the pattern is used a lot on mini real-life outfits, like a, like a schoolgirl uniform or something. So right here in front of us are the colors and patterns that I like.